Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. And in this question, what we gotta do is use the alternative definition of a derivative to find f prime x when the function is x squared over x plus three. Now, we took the derivative, we found the derivative of this already, but using the original definition. And now what we're gonna do in this video is use the alternative definition. And the answer that we got was x squared plus six x over x plus 3 squared. And so when we use that alternative definition, which is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a, we should get that same value. Everything is going to be in terms of a. So our final answer should be this over here just interchanging all the x values with an a value. So let's see if we get it. Um, we'll have the limit as x approaches a over here. Uh, f of x is just the x squared over x plus three minus f of a, we would plug in a for all the x values. So we'll have a squared over a plus three. And this is gonna be all over x minus a. So I'm gonna erase this here. Just feel like I'm gonna need a lot of room for this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rewrite this expression in the numerator on the side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to combine both of these fractions that are subtracting into one fraction. And so to do that, we need a common denominator because we're subtracting two fractions. So I'm gonna multiply this by a plus three and then this I'm gonna multiply by x plus three. That would give us a common denominator. What we do to the bottom though, we gotta to do to the top. Same thing here, multiply this by x plus three. So what we'll have is x squared a plus three minus a squared bracket x plus three all over common denominator x plus three times a plus three like that. And so now what we can do, distribute, distribute. So we'll have uh, ax squared plus 3x squared minus, uh, give me a sec here. Yes, it's correct. Yeah, it's all good. Like that, right? Simplifying all this, all over, x plus three over a plus three. Now here what we can do is we can actually simplify this numerator. Notice there's no like terms here that can cancel out or that can simplify further, but what we can do with that numerator, and here's where this question I feel like gets kind of tough, is we can actually factor this. So the way we would do this first is we would factor by grouping. So what we would do is we would combine this ax squared with this minus a squared x, and then this three x squared combined with this three a squared, like that. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just taking this numerator here and I'm gonna simplify it, I'm gonna factor it. So I took that expression and I rearranged it. I put the three x squared, I basically interchanged the three x squared and the minus a squared x here. And so from here, what we can do, remember factoring by grouping, factor out of these two, what can we factor out? We could factor out an ax from these two and we'd be left with an x minus a. Then from these two, we could factor out a three and we'd be left with x squared minus a squared. And then notice this x squared minus a squared, that's a difference of squares. So that would be three times x minus a, x plus a. So we went from here all the way to here. And I know this might be a little bit confusing at this point, but unfortunately this is what we gotta do. Because remember, we're trying to get an x minus a in this numerator somehow. So it could cancel out with this x minus a. 
So whichever way you do it, you just got to make sure you get that factor by itself. And notice that we're adding these two expressions and both of them have an x minus a. So we could factor out an x minus a from both of these expressions and then we'd be left with an ax plus 3 bracket x plus a. Like that. So this numerator here in brackets simplified all the way to that expression right there. All right, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and remember that all of this is all of this here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write the limit as x approaches a, and then all of this is this. So this numerator I'm going to write in that format, so we'll have x minus a times ax plus this 3, I'm going to just distribute that 3 inside that bracket, so it'll be 3x plus 3a. Um, all over x plus 3 times a plus 3, and this is all over still x minus a, like that. And Everything over this x minus a, that's like x minus a over 1. So it's like we're taking this fraction and dividing it by this fraction, which is the same as taking this fraction and multiplying it by the reciprocal of this fraction. So we could take that x minus a over 1, put 1 over x minus a, and just be multiplying it. And now notice the x minus a's cancel out finally. All right, so pretty crazy, I know. Um, but yeah, that's the way uh, that's the way you got to do it. So now that the x minus a's cancel out, we could plug in an a value for all of the x's. So notice this x value would go to a, this x value would go to a, this x value would go to a. So what would we end up with? We would end up with a times a is a squared plus 3a plus 3a all over a plus 3 times a plus 3, that's just a plus 3 squared. And these are like terms. a squared plus 6a over a plus 3 squared. And notice that that is the exact same derivative that we got when we took found the derivative of this function using the original definition.